you guys got really mad about this. So let's address some of that. Now, one thing that I wanted to mention about this phone was the screen protector. Tons of you thought that I was complaining about the screen protector and I wasn't complaining about it. I was just mentioning that it's a really cheap one. So for people who are going to be buying one of these, you know that the screen protector is not going to last very long. It does have one, which is awesome that it has one, but you should probably look into ordering some better ones when you buy the phone. So that way they arrive around the same time because this didn't last me a day. As you can tell, I, I work on cars for a living, so I'm constantly in dirty environments. I'm in aggressive environments where things can get scratched, so a screen protector is a really good asset to have. So this is, what, like two weeks use? It already has a mark in the bottom. It's super scratched. It's peeling at the top from when I first got it. It's just not a good screen protector, and that's fine. It's free. It's kind of expected. It's just, you know, if you're going to buy one of these phones, buy some other screen protectors because you're going to need them especially if you actually work for a living because it's going to get beat and it's not going to last very long that's it wasn't complaining just mentioning you should buy some other ones if you buy it now another person was saying that i know nothing about phones because the vents are different at the bottom because it's like that for the dock okay fair because the dock covers those that's why they're not drilled out however those are intakes so even if two of them are covered it's not going to affect the performance at all, which means that if you're not in the dock, you're losing air intake. So having them drilled out would have been beneficial with or without the dock. However, they're not, just something worth noting. The air intake is on the blue side, and the hot air comes out the red side, hence the color cold warm. Now one thing that I tried to mention was that the blue was starting to peel off a little bit, and you can see all along the edge, it's chipping and I've never dropped this phone that's just from normal use and having it in my pocket and it's wearing off only on the blue side which is something that I mentioned in the vent where some of the anodizing didn't actually go on all the way this is also gonna be hard to see but there's actually a scratch on the lens that has the red ring around it and again never been dropped normal use and the glass scratched so it's definitely not super high quality glass over top of the lenses so again something worth mentioning so if you get one of these phones you get a case that elevates higher than the lens because it's going to scratch now one thing that i found almost hilarious that people were complaining about was that it's a gaming phone and for some reason that means that the normal phone functions of this aren't supposed to work because it's a phone and you literally can't call people because the microphones don't work. So it's a gaming nothing. It's a gaming device. It's a game console, essentially. And that seems to be the impression that a lot of people had with this. Just because it says gaming in front of it doesn't mean that's the only thing it's supposed to be able to do. Let's take a gaming computer, for instance. If I have a gaming computer, does that mean that I can't use Office? That I can't be editing these videos on it because it's for gaming? And the fact that people were complaining about me trying to use a phone for normal phone functions is just ridiculous. Another issue that I had with the phone, I can't remember if I talked about it in the first video, but it kept deleting apps for some reason, but it didn't actually delete them. One in question was Textra. I used Textra for texting, and for whatever reason, if I restarted the phone, it would leave it in the multitask, so I could open the multitask and I could continue using Textra just fine. However, it would completely remove it from the app drawer. So the app physically wouldn't be there on the phone. I couldn't do it. The only way I could launch the app is if I went to the Play Store, I typed in Textra to download the app, and then it would just say open, but it was actually gone from the app drawer. If I had an icon on the launcher, it would remove the icon every time I restarted the phone, so that was really weird. However, like my impressions before when I said that this is beta software, it's actually confirmed that it's beta software, but I'll get into that in a minute. Now, tons of people were saying, like, clean, clean your garage. The phone probably got scratched because it was on your workbench. And I literally said in the other video that it got scratched on the desk in my office, not in the garage where I was making the video. Spring cleaning, we're trying to get rid of everything, we're trying to clean everything up, I work on cars in here, it's gonna be a dirty place. 
there's nothing clean about this and I'm not doing the phone review in here. It's just quarantine. So there's people in the house. I'm not going to be sitting there making a video with them sitting right beside me or in the other room. I'm trying to make these videos completely uninterrupted. Now back into the part about this being a beta. I've actually been talking to one of the administrators with Nubia, one of the developers, who actually designed the phone itself. And he has completely confirmed that this is beta software. And not only is it beta, but the current updates that he's also given to me and a few other people who are doing some testing for him, he's continuing to release beta updates. There's no stable software for this phone. It has never been released, and that's why the phone was so cheap. He has literally confirmed that they save money on the actual device itself because they don't hire tons of beta testers. They release the phone for less so that way the public can use the phone, feed bug reports, they can fix the issues, and then release updates. So at the time of recording this right now, the current version for the phone for North America is version 3.08, and he's released to me as well as a few others 3.11. And even in that build, it's still not that stable, however a lot of things are fixed. Now I'm closely volunteering some time to work with Nubia to actually fix some of these issues as well as pitching ideas to try and get things actually working and get some function into the North American ROM that are on the China one that they've disabled for whatever reason, one of which is Face Unlock. Not to mention that there's actually root access for this phone, and there's another developer that ended up releasing toggles for this, which ended up fixing one of the drawbacks of the phone of not being able to turn the fan on during normal use, or not being able to show off the RGB just because it has RGB, so why not? So as you can see, the phone is just, you know, just doing phone things. It's just chilling on face unlock. And the fact that that's coming to the North American ROM once they release an update is, it's just amazing. Uh, we can swipe down from the toggles here, Can turn the fan on and off in the regular mode. RGB on. Regular mode. Why were those just never options that they just decided to put in it from the factory? It doesn't break anything. It doesn't make anything work less. There, it works. It's awesome. Now with root access, it's there. We know it's possible. So hopefully, pitching the idea to Nubia, as long as a few other people hopefully we can actually get that into development for the next release that comes out and then that ends up being something that we actually get to see without root. Now, one of the awesome things, awesome things that I wanted to mention was the camera. So many people criticized me for the camera. Why did I buy a gaming phone for the camera? It's about gaming, it's not about the camera. If it's not about the camera, why does Nubia advertise this 64 megapixel camera? Because it was about the camera. And like I showed in the last video, I took some shots, I did some comparisons, and I could not get the 64 megapixel working in the sense that I wanted it to work. And I thought that it was actually doing super resolution to use 16 megapixel to take four separate images and then stitch them together and actually make a 64 megapixel picture. However, that's not true. It is, is a 64 megapixel sensor. Mine is not working. That's why it wasn't working. I've already confirmed with Nubia that mine is not working and they are willing to take my phone back, they're going to test it, they're going to recalibrate it, and they're going to send it back completely free of charge because of this issue. I've already provided test results to them, they completely agreed there was something wrong with my phone, that was the issue. I've talked to other people, we've tested the 64 megapixel camera, and it actually looks amazing, and I am so stoked to send my phone back, get it fixed, and get it back, because that camera is going to be unbelievable once it's working. Which brings me to another step. When I broke the fingerprint reader, my fingerprint reader doesn't work at all. Turns out that the fingerprint calibration and the camera calibration are both on the same partition, which I accidentally wiped, and there's no backup, and there's no way to actually restore it without having the phone manually hardware calibrated. So I'm just waiting for the label from Nubia, and I have to send my phone back to them, and then they have to fix it, and then send it back to me, which could take up to two months. So that was my bad. However, they are fixing it, so I will 100% give Nubia props for that. That's awesome. The fact that I literally broke something trying to fix it on my own terms, and they are still covering that under warranty, is unbelievable. That reminds me of EVGA when they would still cover your warranty even if you opened up your graphics card and you changed the thermal compound. You were allowed to change thermal compound on EVGA graphics cards. You could literally go in and disassemble the device and still remain having warranty. And Nubia is very closely following into that. 
So that's pretty much it for this. That's all I want to get into. The first video was after the first 24 hour impression and I paid $1,100 Canadian for this phone. So I was expecting something a little bit better. But if Nubia had just advertised that it was running beta software and this is the specs in the neighborhood of an $1,800 Canadian phone, the fact that I paid theoretically $700 less completely makes up for the fact that it's running beta software. If they have just been a little bit more open with that. But now that I know, now that I've talked to the developers, now that they've actually given me beta software to test for myself with some updates, and there's a lot of things that are actually fixed, I can safely say with full confidence that this is an awesome phone. It's gonna take some time. There's currently no updates, but once there are updates for it, a lot of it's going to be fixed and a lot of it's gonna work. I've been pitching ideas, so hopefully the toggles for the fan and the LED actually stay in an official release. You won't have to root to actually install it. That would be a huge plus for me. Lastly, before we leave, Nubia Mart is not associated to Nubia. Fun fact, because I bought a case the same time I bought the phone. I've had this phone for two or three weeks now. The phone took probably about a week to arrive, somewhere around there. So let's just say about a month from the time that I ordered the phone until the time that we are now standing here. I have still not received the case or the screen protector that I bought for this phone. Nubia Mart is not associated with Nubia and they are extremely slow. Note to that. However, other people have received their products, so it is a credible source, just extremely slow. So that's just something worth mentioning and I can't wait to get the case because they have this case that matches the phone and I'm super stoked for that. Also, one thing that I'm not supposed to talk a whole lot about, but I've actually seen a phone that's not released by Nubia yet and it looks so cool. It's this in Hacker Black but it's also transparent. And you can see the insides of the phone and it is the coolest thing I've ever seen. So when they release that in a few months, buy that phone. Without a doubt, coolest thing I've ever seen. I might actually sell this to buy the transparent one when they release it, which is also rumored that it may be a 16 gigabyte of RAM with potentially 512 gigs of storage. Not confirmed, rumored, but that would be awesome if they did this. So that is it for me. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already like the video, comment on the video, I try to respond to everything, or don't do any of the above. Uh, I'm not telling you what to do.